kit chai fali mu kikima malum me mu kit ah malum me mu kit kima lum me mu kit malum me mu kit kima mu kit kima mu kit ah chai fali mu kit chai li mu kit chai fali mu kit Well, they call him Madubum Kiti. Well, according to one website, stories have existed long before recorded history and the telling of stories has changed forms drastically throughout the ages. With that said, storytelling festivals have also continued to increase, especially in South Africa. And one such event is the Mukiti Puppetry and Storytelling Festival, which takes place between the 29th of May and the 2nd of June at the Bloemfontein Military Museum in the Free State. And to tell us more about the three-day event, we joined by its organizer, Shemaine Mkhwebi. A very good morning to you, Shemaine. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you, Simpiwe, for hosting me. Yeah, give us a bit of background about this festival and what's the inspiration behind it. Mukiti, Mukiti Storytelling Festival was started three years ago. It was started as an alternative for children to have entertainment because most of the time if there's a festival, if there's a celebration happening, it's always targeted at adults. So there's never a special program that is out there for the children. Yeah. And especially with my children as well. I wanted something that they could attend that was both educational and also had an, an element of fun. Mm -hmm. So I started Mukiti Storytelling Festival because I wanted children in the free state to have an opportunity where they can just, instead of going to the mall, they'll be able to attend the festival. Yeah. We call it Mukiti. Mukiti is derived from a Setswana way that says a celebration. Okay. You know, when there's a celebration, so... During the festival, it, the children are the VVIPs. Everything uh -huh, is uh -huh. about the, the program is tailor-made for them to have fun, to be educational, and just to be the center of attention. Now, how has the festival evolved over the three-year period, and how do you plan on ensuring that uh, each year is made differently? Uh, the festival has evolved because when we started, it was we only had two elements. We are just doing puppetry and storytelling. We just wanted to have children and have our storytellers. But for the second year, we included a different element. We had teachers talk, whereby we were saying to the teachers of the crutches and foundation phase, you're also going to be part of the, of the festival. We held creative writing, writing sessions for them, saying, mm. you know, as teachers in the classroom, you keep on narrating stories in a traditional way where you do, you do the same routine. Mm -hmm. So we started workshopping them, showing that the other elements as a teacher inside the classroom when you do storytelling, you can use a costume. You can also involve children to be called storytellers as well. Yeah. So we included that. And then for the third year this year, what we've included on the Storytelling Festival, we're going to be launching a book that is written by some of the children who attended the festival last year. Okay. Mm. All right. So which storytellers will headline this year's festival? The storytellers that are going to handle that line are, are mostly storytellers from Bluefontein. You've got somebody from the PE. Nalibani has come on board as well to provide mm -hmm. us with storytellers as well. So okay. it's a variety of storytellers from our province coming in and joining hands to make sure that our children are educated and informed on the day. Yeah, yeah. And speak to us about the... I do understand there will be workshops as part of the festival. Talk to us about them. Yeah, basically the workshops are targeted at the teachers because teachers and matron, especially who work at crutches, they were the ones who stay with the children throughout the year. And there are never, you know, resources for them to empower them. Mm -hmm. They are with children day one to day, all, all throughout the month. So we are saying come to these festivals and come and see that we've got programs that are there, especially for, for matrons. We've got um, a, somebody who deals with costumes who will be able to say matron, you know, there's this another thing, six gunning and that you can use when you tell your story. Mm. You are not just supposed to sit like this and tell the children that once upon a time, mm. as a teacher, there are other ad small and other things that you can add. One, once in a while, put on a costume when you go and tell a story to the children. Yeah. Once in a while. To make them understand the exactly, story much better. Yeah. Exactly. Also adapt the story so that the children are part of it instead of them just being on the listening end. Sometimes they come as a matron, they'll be told that you can sit and become an audience and you can just bring those children for a day mm. to participate so that the message is loud and it's reached. And in what way does storytelling improve the lives of children, basically? It, it improves it in a lot of ways because we've got a lot of children. In a classroom, we've got children who are shy, who don't know how to express themselves. Okay. So when you interact with them and you continue to train them and you concentrate on them and you applaud them, the children tend to, to, to gain confidence. And because storytelling's got the ability to paint pictures. I remember yeah. when I grew up, when my grandfather 
grandmother used to tell me stories about my, my great grandmother who passed on and when she told her stories and she was able to elaborate and I could see these amazing pictures. Mm -hmm. So storytelling is able to build the imagination of a child. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, in every festival, in, in every storytelling uh, setting, there are particular themes or subject. So what are they this year? Well, the particular subject is that know yourself. Okay. This is what we are coming with the children this year. We are saying we've got in the free state, we've got Basotos, we've got Botswanas, and we are saying to the young children, you know how young children are like. Some of the things when you say, Ipo, okay, tell us, give us your clean name, the children still don't know who they are. So we, we've yeah. been going to, as part of the marketing, when we visit the crutches, we are saying, when you come to the, we've got big prices for you, but when you come to the crutches, you must come and tell us, Hore, when a umang Right. Yeah, and it's quite exciting. So they are going to their mothers and they say, Mama, tell us, you know. All right. said, so yeah. who have partnered? Who have you partnered with? We've partnered with a lot of of, of lot. Of, like I said, Naliba is on, on board. Mm -hmm. Our free state as and culture in the free state is on board. Organization and NGOs that deals with children are, are, are there. Our libraries that they're on board and child welfare as well. All right. That All right. Shemaine, yeah. thank you so much for joining. Thank time. you so much. Great chatting to you this morning. Thank you. All right, what is so oh inspiring that is a Shemain Khwebi, uh, who is actually the organizer of the Mogeta Puppetry and Storytelling Festival, which takes place between the 29th of May and, of course, and the 2nd of June at the Bloemfontein Military Museum. Now, the three day event is an annual children's festival which targets over 3,000 children based in the Free State. Now, we'll take a short break now. We'll be right back.